Here I'll show you how to do a VLOOKUP across the entire workbook in Excel. That means one simple formula that's going to search through every worksheet and return the first result. As well, the method I'm going to show you will allow you to exclude specific worksheets from the search. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. We have to use a little macro in order to get this guy in Excel. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Then we'll come back to the worksheet, show you a couple more examples how to use it. And then at the very end of the tutorial, I'll walk you through bits of the macro. So the first thing you want to do is to make sure that you download this workbook. And once you have the workbook, go and hit Alt F11 to go to the VBA window. And this is actually the macro right here, but when you go to this window, it's going to look like this probably. So you want to go to Insert Module. It must be inside of a module. You can't put it in one of these worksheets or this workbook over here. It has to be inside of a module. And what you're going to do is you're going to get this code. You're going to copy it. You're going to go to your module, and you're going to paste it in. And that's it. Once you do that, now it's going to cause an error if I go back to the workbook, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this module. So remove module, do not export. So all you do, get this macro here from module one from this workbook, copy and paste it into yours. Once you have that, all you have to do, go back to the workbook, start typing VLOOKUP, and it's going to appear right here. Here I've got a sample master worksheet that you could have where you would summarize data from the workbook. So here we have a very simple item, and we want to return a value from that item. Now down here I have the worksheet tabs, facility A, B, and C. They all have the exact same layout for the data table. You can have other stuff over here. It doesn't matter. It can be different for the worksheet tabs. However, the location of the data through which you want to search has to be the same for every tab. This could be any kind of data setup, so long as it will work with a regular VLOOKUP. So your lookup value has to be here on the left of the data that you want to return. Now let's go take a look at this. It's pretty darn cool. I'm going to delete this here. So this is what we want to look up through the worksheets in the workbook. So we type equals, start to type VLOOKUP, and you'll notice I've got a new little thing down here, VLOOKUP Workbook. So I can double click that, and that's the new function that we're going to create. So it works just like the original VLOOKUP. And what we had to do first, select our lookup value, then comma. Now we need to select the range, the data, the table that we're going to look through. And what I like to do here is to go to one of the worksheet tabs that already has the data table and select it. Now if your data table is going to grow, you want to select much larger than the end of the row, or you could do the entire column. It really doesn't matter then comma for the next argument, and I want to get the value from the third column, so one, two, three, the value. Then comma, I want to have an exact lookup, so we will type false. Notice that the arguments don't appear when you're using a custom function like this, and I'll show you how to get over that little hurdle in a moment. Now I've got the formula exactly how I want, but I'm going to go up here to the top, and I'm going to delete the worksheet reference to facility A. So for the second argument, it will simply be the range reference A2 to C10. Now, I didn't have to navigate to this worksheet to do that, but it just makes it easier to make sure you get the references correct. Now, let's do that closing parentheses at the end. Hit Enter. And you can see for ASC-4, we have 20. 20. Now, let's go ahead and put in another one. How about 12? That gives us 16. Let's verify that. Facility B, we have 12 and 16. It's so simple. I don't know why this is not included by default in Excel. Let's take a look at the function now. It might have been a little confusing how I made it. But here you can see it's a VLOOKUP workbook. We'll talk about that later. First argument is our lookup value. The second one is just the range reference where your table is going to be, your data table. It doesn't matter what worksheet it's on. This is not worksheet specific. You just give it a straight up range, nothing else. 
But if you do navigate to another worksheet to make sure you get the range references correct, like I did, you will have to remove the worksheet name from the front of this range reference. Then here, just like a VLOOKUP, what column do you want to get the data from? And then just like the VLOOKUP, false. So true or false for the last argument, if you want an exact match or not. All right, now let's talk about uh, one way to use it if you're a little bit confused about the arguments. So with the arguments, what you have here is an easy way to view the arguments. Just type the regular VLOOKUP. So all of the arguments for the new VLOOKUP are in the exact same order and have the exact same values, essentially, as the VLOOKUP function. So it's this order. So all you do is start typing your VLOOKUP and just fill it out for the VLOOKUP. Got your lookup value, OK, comma. Now we're onto the table array. So let's go over here, select our table array, comma. What's our column index number? Three, comma. What's our range lookup? See, it's really nice. It tells you here true or false. False for exact match. And then go ahead and hit Enter. So this isn't going to work. And you may wonder why it didn't work when, in theory, it should have worked. That's because ASC-12 is actually on a different worksheet. So if I very quickly changed this to 2, you would see it working down here. But we want to update it to work against all of the worksheets. So first, we just change this one to workbook. Start typing. You'll see it fill in. Hit the tab key. And remember, let's go ahead and kill this guy, the sheet reference. And that's it. Go back up here. What do we have? 12. Perfect. So just a little trick to enter this a little bit more easily is just start off with the regular VLOOKUP function so you can see all the arguments, enter everything, hit enter when you're done with the function, go back here, type in VLOOKUP workbook for the first part, remove the worksheet reference for the second argument, and that's it. Now let's go ahead and do an example where we limit the worksheets. So oftentimes you may have a bunch of data worksheets, but you may have a couple like this master worksheet here, or you may have one that combines all of the data and you don't want to be searching through those. They might may not be updated the same way. There's lots of different reasons. So here, let's put a little limit on this. We're going to limit it by worksheet. And what I'm going to do here is put a new worksheet just called consolidated. So let's say that what we have is a bunch of this data. And it doesn't matter how much data you have. You could do whatever you want here. The point is you're going to have duplicates. So you're going to have values that would be returned by this new VLOOKUP function. But let's say that these values aren't up to date. Maybe you're just building out the spreadsheet. That's actually a pretty common one. So let's say we just have a bunch of default values. Could be like that. So things we don't want returned. Then we go over here. And we run it again. And actually, that didn't work because 12 is lower than our table here. The table only goes down to row 10. And this is in row 13. So let's go ahead and update that formula so it will just work for everything in A and everything in C. And there we go, 999. So not what we want. Now let's go ahead and fix this. What I've done here is a neat little thing. Right after all of the regular VLOOKUP arguments, everything is still exactly the same. After false, just type a comma, double quotation marks, and the name of the sheet to skip. Now when we hit Enter, now this is a fun little thing. We have a circular reference because this formula is going to reference every worksheet by default. And our lookup is now within A, B, and C, the table array for that lookup. And here we have a lookup. So let's just hit OK. We don't really care what's going to happen there. And let's move this guy. I'll show you how to fix this in a moment. Up to here. So now, perfect. We have 16. So what we do 
is it skips over the consolidated worksheet and goes over all the way to facility B and returns 16. And it's as easy as that to exclude worksheets. Now let's talk about the error that just appeared. So I've got the formula here, no problem. Got the formula here, no problem. But going over here, issue. So the issue is that, look, if I turn this to 3, A3 to C, let's say 100, it wouldn't matter because the formula is now out of bounds of the table array here. You can see the red box here. So we're not creating a circular reference. But we can also do it another way. So where you have your master worksheet, if your formula, like this example, will fall within the range reference for the data, like this, where you have a red square completely containing where your formula is, just put this worksheet as the very first one to skip. So we're going to skip master worksheet, and we're going to skip consolidated worksheet. Hit enter. No more circular reference. Now, that can seem kind of confusing, but just remember, this formula works for every single worksheet, which includes the current worksheet. And in some cases, that could be very helpful, where you have your data table over here as well, and then just a little helper function on the side, and you would never notice that maybe. But if you're building a master worksheet like this, where you don't have the data on there, it could very well happen. And this is how you get around it. What I've done is I've included by default up to five worksheets that you can put over here to skip calculations for, or to skip the VLOOKUP on. So the VLOOKUP just won't go to that worksheet at all. And all you have to do is use double quotes and type the name of the worksheet, and just worksheet, comma, worksheet, comma, worksheet, comma. So they are comma-separated arguments. That's the only thing that's different than the regular VLOOKUP function here. So just remember, if you forget the arguments, just do the regular VLOOKUP. All the arguments are the same, except after the range lookup, you can now input up to five worksheets that you want to skip. Now there's one more thing I need to show you about this function, and you may never encounter this issue, but if you do, it's going to be very difficult to troubleshoot. You're just going to be pulling your hair out. So let's say that my worksheet tabs are actually named Facility A and Facility AB. Now let's go over to the master worksheet, and let's copy all of this and paste it over here. And let's say that in addition to master and consolidated, we now wanted to skip facility A, B. And we get a zero. So what exactly happened here? We have ASC-12. It should have skipped consolidated, gone to facility A, looked for it, couldn't find it here. And it should have found it on here. But we skipped this one. Now, what if we change this to one that should be on facility A, like ASC-8? What's going to happen? These two guys work. This one still doesn't work. So anything that matches any subset of the worksheet tab that you want to filter out, so by subset I mean the letters contained in it, such as here we have facility A, anything that's matched by that is also going to be excluded. The only way to really get around this is to make it so that your tabs don't have a naming convention like this, facility A, facility A, B. No, just keep it like this, facility A, facility B, C, and so on, and you won't have any problems. It also happens if you do numbering. So if you do week 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, week 10 will conflict with week 1 because the characters week 1 are also contained in week 10. You can see it if I write it out here, week 1 week 10. So that would cause an issue. Now it has to do with how things work in the back, the back end here. Most likely you're not going to run into this issue. This issue will only come up when you try to limit the worksheets through which this function is searching. So if you want to search through all the worksheets, you're not going to run into that. But the moment that you start trying to exclude specific worksheets, that's when it comes into play. Now I'm going to go ahead and change this back to facility A, B, and delete these guys, just so in the workbook that you download, you'll have a very clear illustration of this issue. 
Now the very last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the macro behind this and I'm going to show you how to increase the limit of worksheets that you can exclude. So I think that will be the most useful thing you get from it. Let's hit Alt F11, go back to the module where you pasted your code. Here you can see the name of our function. So if you want to change that to something a bit more useful for yourself, just change it here. This is what actually appears within the worksheet. And here I've laid out the argument on separate lines. So we've got our lookup value, table array, column index number, and then range lookup. These are the standard VLOOKUP arguments. And the arguments here are in the order in which you need to input them in the worksheet. Here are the new guys that I added. So we have sheets to exclude one, two, three, four, five. And I put optional in front of them. That means it's not a required argument. If you want to add more sheets, just add a new line like this. You can copy this. But make sure that if you're adding a new line, you put a comma right here. The comma is what lets the macro know that there's going to be another thing on the next line. And then do a space and an underscore. You need the underscore because technically all of this should be on one line. So just make sure you follow this format and then once you have the new one, rename it and then you want to go down here to where it says put sheets to exclude into an array. I'm going to copy that name, go here to the end, comma, space, paste, now we can exclude up to six sheets. The macro is a pretty basic macro. Do make sure that you do not comment out the on error resume next. Don't do that unless you're troubleshooting as the VLOOKUP will throw an error when it doesn't find a result on a particular worksheet and that kind of messes everything up. Uh, then down here, we have very simple stuff. I'll go through this quickly. Here, we're just gonna loop through all of the worksheets. Here is the mechanism we use to make sure that we filter out the worksheets that we don't want to be searched. Here, all that we're doing is setting the sheet, the table array, and this is the VLOOKUP. This is actually where we do the VLOOKUP, and you can see the arguments that we enter go straight into the VLOOKUP function here. Lookup value, table array, column index number, and range lookup. So we're using the proper normal VLOOKUP function, actually. Here, if we find a value, then we just exit the loop that's going through all the worksheets. And down here, we set the value that we got from the VLOOKUP function right here. We set that to output for our function. So that's, this is how you do that with functions. You just put the name of the function, the same name that you have up here. And you set it equal to the value that you want to output. That's really all there is to this macro, but honestly, I just suggest you download the workbook, copy this macro, paste it into your workbook, and use it from there. Just remember, super easy equals VLOOKUP workbook, the same arguments as the regular VLOOKUP, except you can also choose worksheets to exclude so you're not going through the entire workbook. And remember, that's important for avoiding circular references in some cases. But that's really all there is to the VLOOKUP workbook function, and I hope you found it helpful. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.